Good morning. This is Ed Holmwood with Elmo USA. I hope everyone is well today. Today we're going to be going over uh, how to use your Elmo document camera for distance learning by using our web-based software application. It's a very super simple, very easy and secure way to utilize your Elmo document camera. So let me escape out of this. I just wanted an introduction slide and we'll go to our desktop. So we do need to use, regardless of whether we're using a Chromebook, Chromebox, Windows PC, Windows laptop, Mac, uh, MacBook, or uh, Mac Pro, we do need to use a Chrome-based web browser. So it can be Google Chrome, Opera, Mozilla Firefox, or in this particular case I happen to use Vivaldi. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the browser and it comes out to my home screen and we're going to go up to the address bar and we're going to type in www.imagemate, all one word, hyphen c dot com. And if we go ahead and again it's www.imagemate hyphen c dot com. And we go ahead and execute that. And it's going to bring up the greeting page, the opening page. You can choose not to show this each time you launch it just by checking the box down here. So this gives you an overview of the camera and different things, copyright, so forth. Functions explains what each of the uh, icons on the toolbar will give you. Talks about system requirements. There's some other things here like the microphone or speaker, uh, full frame, the tabs. We'll get into that in just a second. And then the system requirements are again quite simple. Any Chrome based browser, and again in Windows 10, any, almost any version of Windows, Mac OS, Chrome OS, and Android, but Android is not common because there aren't very many Android devices that have a USB input for a camera. We can choose in the lower uh, right hand corner not to show this opening screen again, but we can always come back to it and I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to go ahead and X out of that, and what you're going to see is the camera real, li real time live image from, in this case, I happen to be using an MXP2 uh, along with our, by the way, along with our MX writing board, which is a great tool, especially for this kind of application. So I've got a good target area. I know when I put it on this surface, it's going to be under the screen. So that's the, the basics for imagemate-c.com. Again, super easy. You don't need to download anything. It's really very simple and very secure. So let me go ahead and replace that with some sample text and you can see it does a very good job all the way down to a size 12. Now I'm using the MXP as I'd mentioned. Uh, the new units, the MXP2, functionally for, and for this they're going to be identical as far as this goes. So let's talk about some of the features of the software itself. So I'm going to go ahead and start on the right on the left hand side, excuse me, of the screen with the pencil icon. If I push that it brings up a palette of colors for me to choose from. If I touch it again it allows me to choose a different line width and I actually have a touch screen laptop so it makes it very very simple for me to annotate over whatever image is on the screen. You also notice the toolbar minimized itself the minute I started annotating again giving me a larger work area. So if I bring that back up again and we move to the right it's a highlighter. Now I can choose again the highlighter colors I'm just going to go ahead and use the yellow and I can highlight text which makes it, again, easy to illuminate and enumerate what it is I want my students to see. We'll bring that toolbar back up and choose the eraser. So the eraser has a couple functions. The first function is it allows me to erase just a portion of the image, or I can erase everything with a touch of a button. Again, moving to the right, this is our capture button. So what this will do, and I'm going to put some different materials here on the screen just so we get a different view. It'll actually take a still image of the, you know, whatever's under the camera. So we'll go ahead and do that in the upper left. You'll see a red camera icon pop up and disappear. Now, where is that information stored? If we come out to our Explorer and we go to our default downloads folder where your browser points to for downloading information off the screen, You'll see right here, time and date stamped and numbered. And again, it is a stamp, but it is a universal, it's a, uh, I'm sorry, international convention. So year, month, date. So if I double click on that, you'll see that's the image we just captured. 
I can save that, I can email it out, I can do whatever I want to with it. Same with video recording. So with the video recording, you can either use the built-in mic if you want to narrate, the built-in mic into your laptop, or with the MXP2, the new OX1, and any of the new stem cams, they have built-in microphones which you can allow this application to use to record your voice for videos. This is the image rotate, it's just a 180 degree flip. So for instance, if I wanted to show you guys me, there I am, I'd have to flip the image. I apologize for being so gorgeous. The next one is the freeze frame function, which allows me to freeze the information on the screen so I can change things out, I keep my students' attention where I want it, and then we come back to a live image. Now the, the next, or to the right, is the slider for zoom. And this is actually really nice. So we just slide it over a little bit, and you can see we can zoom in. If we go too far in, because it is just a digital, it will start to pixelate and lose a little bit of resolution, but it's a very, very useful function. Moving to the right is a box with different inputs on it. So let's do this. We pop it up. I have four different whiteboard spaces. And again, I can just do some basic whiteboarding. And again, I'm using my touch screen. And I can save that if I want to, which makes it very convenient. I can also uh, do a series of those one after another and not erase the previous one. I'm going to go ahead and erase this one real quick because I'll forget otherwise. And you'll see contents that will come back out and allow you to go to your downloads and grab that image that you had before. You notice it opened it in the browser this time. So that's the best way to access it. We come back out here and we can go to back to our camera live image. Or I can also, because I have a webcam built into my laptop, I can enable the webcam at the same time. Hi guys. So I have multiple options on how I want to, if I, how I use this. And again, it is super simple and super easy. This is the speaker button allows me to turn on and off my microphone. Uh, in this particular case, I'm using the microphone built into our Elmo huddle space, which is what I'm actually using to record this. But if I do turn it on, you'll hear a bit of an echo probably being picked up, and that's utilizing the built-in mic. So I'm going to go ahead and mute that because it can feedback. So before you actually go online and teach, test this out and make sure you can adjust your microphone volume accordingly. The next button, these arrows going off in different directions, this is really handy. This is the full screen button. What it does is eliminate your browser address bar and status bars and your task bar at the bottom and give you a full screen to work with. Very, very convenient. So again, no distractions, no one's looking at your bookmarks. Everybody can pay attention to the screen here. This little question mark brings back up our tutorial and our user guide. And then up in the upper right hand corner, we have a timer. So if we want to do task timing, we can go ahead and set it for really any time we want to. I can go ahead and start it and it'll count down. It doesn't make any noise or ticking sound, that'd be annoying. I can stop it, I can restart it, or obviously I can reset it and then make it go away. Now, on either end of the toolbar, far left, far right, you'll see little arrows. This allows me to flip the order of the icon, so change the layout of the menu. If I click it, the pens are now down on this end, and everything else is down on that end. If I go back over here and flick it, or flip it, it'll be that way. Now, you'll notice now there's a down arrow. That obviously gives us the ability to hide the menu. And then the two tabs on the far right and left display menu allow you to bring that menu back up. So we're going to go ahead and come out of that. Now, if you'll bear with me one moment, what I'm going to do is switch cameras. I'm currently using the MXP, but I'm going to go ahead and use Connect our OX1 because I want to show you how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug the camera. It'll have just frozen the frame. There won't be anything there, and I apologize for any noises that I'm making because the microphone happens to be very close to the work area. And I'm going to take an OX1, which is our newest, least expensive camera, and I'm going to plug it into my laptop via the USB cable. Now, nothing's happened. You don't see anything. Oh, you know what? It went blank because it doesn't identify the camera. So the way to get this to connect back up again is come up to your browser and go to your refresh button. So if I go ahead and refresh my web page, it's going to bring that back up, and there we are. I have my, this is the new OX1 camera, 
and the MX writing board being used now for this. Now it changes the identification on this to just Elmo camera. It, it was a simpler way to do it. And again, I still have all my webcam, I still have access to all my contents and everything else. And all of my functions are absolutely identical. So we're going to go ahead and pop out to full screen. We're going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Now, one thing you need to know is you do have to push the autofocus button on the individual camera. I'm going to turn the light on in this one too. You'll see the lights on. There will be a little digital artifacts because with this, what we're doing is rather than having the software running on your local machine, we're going out to one of the Elmo servers and it's processing it and it's coming back to your uh, computer. So it uses uh, actual C program programming language, but there is some bi-directional communication. No one's monitoring any of this stuff. It is totally secure. Um, but there will be a little bit of a drop in screen sharpness compared to if you were running a desktop version of the app. So if I come in here and we go ahead and focus, you'll see it is still quite sharp and very, very useful. I apologize. We're just grabbing something different here to show you guys. So again, that's the OX1. Super easy, super simple. Now I'm going to go ahead and pause for a moment and we're going to connect uh, a webcam. So bear with me just a moment. I'll be right back. Thank you. Hi everybody, I'm back. So now what I've done is, and I apologize for the view here, is I've gone ahead and connected one of our STEM cams, the MA1, to my computer via USB and then again through our ImageMate-C uh, web application and you can see it works just perfectly. So the web application ImageMate-C.com works with legacy products like the uh, MX1, the MXP, the TT12ID, the LX1, and the TX1, although they will not work with Chrome, they will work with Windows and Mac. All of the newer cameras, the MX1, MXP, the new MXP2, the new OX1, and the new STEM cams will work with Chrome. Uh, there's just a driver issue in the past. So this is the easiest way to utilize your Elmo document camera for remote learning and share it with your students. I can do it through this web page and then if I'm in Zoom I can do a share screen and share my whole screen with them so they can see what's going on. Um, and I'm going to be doing another video on how to use the camera just with Zoom and you don't need to use this web application if you don't want to, but you're going to give up all your annotation, annotation tools and so forth. So anyway, if you have any questions, and let me zoom in on that. Please visit, visit us at elmousa.com. And I thank you so much for your time. And I hope everyone stays safe. Thank you.